Hello, welcome to the Counter-Attack playthrough series. We're playing Invasions. This is turn one, part three. We're starting the military phase. We've already done the time phase, the administration phase. Now it's the military phase. This is where the fun stuff happens. We're going to go activate nations, not raider nations, because they did stuff in the time phase. So we're going to activate nations in nation activations order. Let's, uh, let's start doing this. Um, one thing about nations activations order, if you watch my other videos, uh, I was saying barbarians go first, kingdom second, empires third. That's correct. And then for a tiebreaker, you look at the age. I did that backwards. The age is the oldest goes first, youngest last. Didn't really matter um, in the prior videos. It totally will matter in the military phase. Here's the Avum chart or the age chart. It's got markers for all the full-fledged nations. They're categorized into barbarians at the bottom, civilized at the top. Since barbarians activate first, we're going to activate these guys. We start with the oldest barbarians, which will be H2. There's a stack of four here, the Alemanni, the Franchi, Franci, Franchi, <laughs> Ostrogoths, and Visigoths. So there's a tie there. We have to break the tie. Uh, to do that, we go to the nation card. And the nation card you look at the lowest number on the upper left of the cards, Alemanni, Franchi, Ostrogothi, Visigothi. So we can see that's going to be the order. So Alemanni first. Okay, here's the Alemanni. The entire tribe is in one space. Agra Decumatis, something like that. And it's a stack of all infantry with a leader and a horde. The horde is really their people. It's everybody. It's the men, women, children, animals, everything. And uh, something's making these guys want to move. They want to move somewhere. I don't know. Might be other people moving from the east, pushing them, possibly. So they're on the move. So what's going to happen? is the first step of the military phase is the unit stack step. That's where the Alemanni can move all their units up to their movement range, um, stack by stack, anywhere that they're allowed to go. There are rules for uh, it, enemies potentially trying to intercept them as they move or run away from them as they move. Also, if they enter a more fortified location or or an enemy that doesn't run away they're gonna have to stop and fight there's some other nuances but basically as they're moving they're gonna they're gonna move all their units they can pick up drop off split up move one guy stop move another guy come back to the first guy and continue moving so that it's pretty flexible um, but once they've all done that then any combat situations that exist after moving will be resolved there'll be one or more battles or zero or more battles Okay, and then after that is the leader campaigns. And this leader has a campaign rating of two. That basically means his stack of units can then move and combat again, just like the unit stack segment, except it's only his stack, not other stacks. There's some other nuances to it. And he can do that twice. Additionally, the Alemanni, according to their card, which we'll look at this, are scheduled to do an invasion on turn one. Uh, so right now. So an invasion means they do the unit stack step twice. So they move combat, move combat, before having leader campaigns. So these guys are going to do some stuff. But what are they going to do? There's lots of choices. Are they going to go northeast? Probably not. Are going to go west, south? Why would they care, you know? Well, their nation card is going to give us some guidance. And in general, the guidance is more points for behaving as they did historically, but you are allowed to do whatever you like. Let's go check out the nation card. So I'm just spending a little more time on this first nation than I will on the others, just so we can understand the choices to make, especially for barbarians. I think the choices are a little easier for kingdoms and empires because broadly speaking, they just want to hold on to what they have they're not um, trying to move somewhere. Okay, so these guys. Well, first, a hint of their preferences for getting victory points. And again, in this game, 
the goal is to get as many victory points as you can for your color. So um, the green player doesn't want to just squander these guys. This is a victory point generating people. So first thing we do is we look at this top area. So it says Gallia Sept. Uh, that's short for Septentrionalis, something like that. We can just call it Northern Gaul. It says that. And we can even see Northern Gaul is highlighted here with a little flag on the map. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a little arrow moving over there that kind of starts from where they start from uh, on the map. It's not quite there, but it's pretty close. That's showing, hey, this is what they did historically. And if you behave that ma in that manner, you're going to get points. Check it out here, VP bonus. This isn't the only way to get VP. This is a bonus VP. If they form a kingdom in Gallia Sept, 10 victory points. If they later form an empire in Gallia Sept, 20 victory points. That's a lot of victory points. So um, if they do it, those items in a different area, because they're not limited, they can go into Germania, they can go anywhere, um, half that, so five and 10. Okay, now let's go look at the non-bonus victory points. There's a lot. Every non-Raider nation has a schedule pretty much like this. The first section is points you can get at any time. So it usually tells you there are certain units that you get points for eliminating. Sometimes the people don't care. They get points for whoever. <laughs> but in this case, the Alemanni get a victory point for each Burgund, Frank, Hun, or Roman unit eliminated, but only if it's eliminated in Gallia Sept. They get three victory points for each turn they're under a fetus. I don't really know how to say that word. It's a Latin word. Um, but basically it means an empire, for example, the Western Roman Empire, agrees to let the barbarian tribe live within their borders. They basically say, here's two provinces. They're still ours, but you can live here. Please protect the border. And in return, we'll give you gold and in game terms, three victory points. By the way, we need men for our army. Please give us men. And so uh, in game terms, if you're under Fittus, while you're getting three victory points, you also have to give one military unit to your, your host. Um, but that's a way to generate victory points, and you're kind of a little safer. If there's Roman um, limitas, you know, uh, fortifications along the border, they'll protect you. So, uh, and then... This schedule here is pretty much consistent across all the nations. I think it might be identical across all the nations. Turns three, six, nine, and last turn. And it gives you points you can get. For example, check it out. Five victory points for control of Lotharingia on turn three. You don't get any on turn one or two, but that's like a goal. Like, hey, by turn three, I should try to get control of Lotharingia. If I want those points. And there's some other points, right? Turn six. Eight points for Lotharingia. Oh, I better hold on to that. Ooh, look, there's even more points. And if I'm like, you know, going all out, like I can get a lot of points if I just take all of Gallia Sept. Turn nine says same points as six. Wow, even more points. Plus 10 points if I take all of Mo Gallia Meridianalis, which is Southern Gaul. Last turn, same as nine. So there's a ton of points if these guys focus on basically conquering Gaul. So Alemanni want to conquer Gaul. One more little tidbit here. This shows their reinforcement schedule. Now this just shows their starting units and it tells us, hey, they're invading, like I mentioned earlier. Then each turn it tells the units they get. They get two units in a king, two units in a king, two units in a named king. So some famous king, same as Vader Maris here, um, and so on. So as long as they're a barbarian, they're going to get this. At some point, they're going to become civilized, though. That's when they go for the 10 points to become a kingdom. And at that point, they're now collecting income, just like we did for the Guptas and the Persians in episode two. And uh, they're going to be buying units. I think that's enough. Now let's go see what they can do. Okay, so the Alemanni are here, and they're about to activate. So there's a few things that other nations have to do when a, a nation's about to activate. First, 
a nation that has diplomacy cards should announce that they're going to use them. For example, these are the ones the Western Roman Empire has. Should announce they're going to use them before they go, the Romans in this case, on their military phase, or the target goes, whichever comes first. So if they were going to use these cards on the Alamanni, they would have to declare it right now. However, barbarians that are marked as invading on the turn cannot receive diplomacy cards. So uh, the Romans don't have that option. Another option for the Romans to try to influence these guys, I don't see a rule barring this on an invasion, is to offer them fetus. Uh, offer them to become a federate. Um, so again, what that means is the Romans would have to pick a province adjacent to the horde. Okay, we got we have several. And then they have to pick another province adjacent to that province. So they have to pick two provinces, and they're going to essentially let the barbarians live in them. And then the barbarians would just, like, go into them if, let's say, it was these two. All right, so that does seem like an option, and that would foil the invasion. The Romans are only allowed to offer fetus once per turn. Each nation can only offer it once per turn outside of a diplomacy card. So they have, I, th I suppose they have to decide, are they going to offer it to these guys? Or, you know, I see the Franks up here ready to come in too. Um, I think it would, as the Roman player, I think it would be unlikely for them to accept Fetus, since they are doing an invasion. So we won't offer it. Another thing other nations can consider right when a nation's about to activate is barbarians that are in barbarian areas as opposed to civilized areas. By default, all barbarians are mutually neutral, except for nomadic barbarians. Those are the scary ones. These guys are not nomadic. Um, so by default, they are neutral um, to other barbarians as long as they're in barbarian areas. As soon as they're in a civilized area, you know, they're, they're now hostile. But a barbar barbarian tribes may declare hostility right at activation time. So like, for example, the Franks could say, uh, no, I'm hostile, I'm hostile. And what that does is it allows them to do things like intercept these guys when they're moving. So I think the Franks though, they're gonna say, no, no, I'm good with you, man, we're, we're good. Um, so, and all the other barbarians on the map, same thing. They're not declaring hostility. Now what I think I want to do with these guys is, well, based on all the victory points I read off just a minute ago, I want to go into Gallia Sep. In fact, Lotharingia, I think, is right here. Lotharingia. Okay. As they move, enemies can attempt to intercept them, provided the province is friendly to the enemy, and they're within three provinces of the location. So if this horde moved into here, this Roman could try to intercept. It's one sp one province away. This Roman could try to intercept. One, two, three. It's, it's three provinces away. What the interception rules are is every leader stack can try to intercept, and one leaderless stack can try to intercept. If these guys move into an enemy space and the enemy stays there, doesn't try to run away, which is a possibility, they have to stop and fight them. And that includes the limites. Um, these fortifications along the border. Okay, remember this is an entire stack of infantry. Infantry have a movement allowance of three. A horde for a non-nomadic barbarian tribe also moves at three. If they all move with their leader together, plus one. So let's just go ahead and throw these guys together. They got four movement points. Bam, going right in there. Now the Romans have to decide are they going to intercept? These guys are in friendly territory to the Romans, so that means they can intercept. Okay, that's a scary thing. Like, the Romans could just ignore it, right? What will happen is the Limitus, the, or the Limus, will be destroyed. And that unit stack's step will be over. However, this is an invasion, so the Alemanni will get a second unit stack step. And now they can... They're through the wall and can fan out over 
um, Gallia, perhaps. So I think the Romans need to try to intercept, okay? So we're gonna look at a handy little interception chart, but um, we'll start with this leader. His entire stack is gonna intercept. First uh, combat bonus of the leader, uh, we're gonna roll a 10 sided die and then we're gonna add the combat bonus. So plus three, plus two if the interceptor is an empire, Western Rome is an empire. Minus one if the land distance is three, one, two, three it is, okay, so now we're down to plus four. Minus two for each ridge or straight crossed. Here's a ridge, so you're gonna one, cross a ridge, two, three. And I think that's the only, yeah, they have to go across a ridge. Um, so I think we're looking at, what was that? Plus five, minus three, so it's a total of plus two. And we're trying to roll a six or more. Seven plus two is nine, so these guys successfully intercept. There's no, like, oh, I, I'm sorry, I changed my mind um, thing in this game for the barbarians. Like, they're, they're stuck. Okay, so I actually think the Romans need to get even more aggressive here. I know the Franks are coming in, but I think these, this is a lot of Alemanni. I think this Gallia Legion is going to try as well. Um, so for them, there's no leader, so the interceptor is an empire plus two. That's the only, only thing. Plus two, we need a six. Got an eight, ten. So these guys intercept in. Gonna have a battle. Okay, here we are. Here are all the troops. So, while the Romans were attempting to intercept, the Alemanni were breaking through the Lemus, and it is destroyed. Okay, so that's just part of part of the game. So it is destroyed, and that's gonna count as a Roman unit, so that'll be one victory point for the Alemanni right there. But they do have to make a D2 check, that's an even odd check, um, to see if they, one of their units takes a hit. That is odd, so no hit, so they looked out there. Incidentally, I need to make sure I'm following stacking rules, but I just happen to know Julianus has a stacking of three. Um, he can stack up to four plus three units, so he's good, and then we've already established um, four plus two plus one for invasion, so we can stack everybody here. Now the game has two sets of combat rules, basic and advanced. I'm gonna be doing advanced. I honestly don't think it's any more complicated than basic. In fact, it's probably faster to resolve. So uh, I'm doing advanced. Okay, the first part of battle is an archery round. And if it takes place in a mountain uh, terrain, it, there could be um, an actual ambush with the archers, but this was in a forest. But we check to see, are there any archers? Yes. Right here, there's a bow symbol connected to a cavalry. So this is cavalry archers, but they count as archers. Okay, then we're gonna roll 2d6 with a modification. So um, the modification will be plus one for each archer. So we're just gonna get a plus one for that. If we were in clear step or desert terrain, which we're not, it'd be plus one and a half for horse archers because they're like riding around fast and shooting, right? But we're in woods, so nope. Uh, another thing, minus two for heavy advantage. Heavy advantage is when one side has heavy units and the other side doesn't, or they have two more heavy units than the other side. Well, these are the heavy unit symbols, these little shields. So the Romans actually have heavy advantage. They have three, the Alemanni have none, so no negative. Okay, so we're gonna roll and then look at the mini uh, chart or CRT. Let's see, what do we got? Three, <laughs> plus one. And if you look at the chart, that is a miss. All right, so archery round done. Now we're gonna do up to two rounds of melee combat, okay? And we're gonna roll 2d6, look up the result on a CRT. There's die roll modifiers, broken down by attacker modifiers, defender modifiers, and tactical situation modifiers, okay? Okay, so looking at the attacker modifiers, the only one that you might think matters, well maybe two, is the minus one in forest, but the minus one in forest is only against 
non-nomadic barbarians in a forest. So these guys are the attackers. These are not non-nomadic barbarians. They're civilized. And the other is cr if all units crossed a river, minus one. And they did, except they were intercepted. So they, like, got across and then were intercepted. That's sort of the abstraction going on there. So uh, we're looking at no modifiers for the attacker. As you can see here, there are no modifiers for the defender either. Uh, there is an empty city space in Lotharingia, so um, and there, there's no straight crossed. Now for the tactical situation die roll modifiers. So it's plus one if you have two or more elites on your side. Well, the Romans have one, two, three, four, five. Those are the diamonds. So they have five elite units. Even though some of them have double diamonds, I guess what I mean is they have double elite. <laughs> so there's five diamonds, five diamonds worth of elite combat power. And as you can see in the chart, you get plus one if you have two or more. But if you're Roman Byzantium, you get plus two if you have four or more. So I'm going to just put this die roll down here and say, yeah, okay, they got a plus two right now. The Alemanni, they only have one diamond. But as long as you're a barbarian, you can't use your elite. You know, there's no elites in barbarians. That's only applicable for if they become a kingdom or empire. You also get a plus one for having cavalry advantage. And that's where if one side has no cavalry and you have cavalry, you get a plus one. Or if they have cavalry and you have two more than them. So that's the case for the Romans, right? So we get a plus one here. So now they're at plus three. If the opponent has the heavy advantage, it's similar to the cavalry advantage, but instead of for little um, horse head icons, we're looking at these shield with the star icons. Rome has the heavy advantage. That's going to be plus four. Or no, I'm sorry. Heavy advantage you subtract from the attacker, or from the side that doesn't have it. So this will be a negative. I'll put the negative to the right of the units. A side gets a plus one if they are an empire versus barbarians. So man, you can see the Romans, while they aren't numerically superior, just, you know, they're just a little bit inferior numerically. Qualitatively, they're very superior. Now, event cards might be able to modify this, um, but I looked at what both the green player and the red player have, not really useful. Now, there's one last little bit, which is the benefits of the leaders. So, the leaders have a combat bonus here. Two and three. That actually represents how many re-rolls they can order during this combat. So both sides roll and then leaders take turns deciding if they're gonna use a re-roll. However, each leader may forfeit one re-roll during the entire melee round to get a plus two or minus two. A plus two for themselves or a minus two for the enemy to their die roll modifier. So these guys need to decide. Now, that might be a good idea for the Alamani to do this, right? Since they only have a plus one modifier and the Romans have a plus four. Unfortunately, the attacker has to declare first and then the defender. So if they declare first, the Romans could then just follow suit and cancel it out. And they have an extra reroll. So I'm not sure what the right call on this is, but I'm inclined to boost my die roll. So we'll we'll give up one reroll to get up to three. And it's kind of silly, but I think the Romans will give up one reroll to knock this back down to one. Each side actually rolls. So we'll start with the attacker. This is the attack by the Alamani. I got a seven plus one, eight. We cross check that with the number of units on the attacking side, which is six. Um, that is two and a half, so two and a half hits. If you look at the bottom of the chart, it says half rounds up only in clear desert or steppe. Well, we're in forest, so it's going to be two and a half. The half will be lost. It won't round up. So two hits. Now for the Romans. Oh, 11 plus four is 15. That's maxed out on the chart. Three and a half. So three, yeah, you know, seemed like it would be massively devastating, but it's just three, three versus two. By the way, if the Alamani were the defenders, the horde would count as a defending unit, but it doesn't count as an attacking unit. Now the attacker can use a reroll on themselves or on the enemy. 
they're still going to have these attack modifiers, 4 and 1. So, you know, these guys rolled a 7, I think, if I recall correctly, which is about average. Um, and then I think they got boosted up to an 8, right? Um, these guys rolled an 11. I suppose there could be a benefit to ordering them to re-roll. It's going to be 3 versus 2 losses. I should point out that the veteran units, when they take a hit, they just flip over and still live. I think I mentioned that earlier. So um, even though like these guys have an extra unit and you think, oh, maybe they can absorb losses, like the Romans can really absorb losses. Well, I think the Alemanni are going to force the Romans to re-roll. <laughs> 11. <laughs> okay. So the Romans have two re-rolls left. I think... Their odds are decent that they can they can cut their losses a little bit. They're gonna do a reroll on the Alamani side. Six plus one is seven. Two and a half still. They're gonna do it again. Their last reroll. Oh, okay. Well, that backfired. Ten plus one is eleven. So yeah, I guess I got greedy. I, I go to Vegas too often. Okay, so it's three losses each side. Now, each side just picks their own losses. So, the Alemanni don't have much of a choice here. Bam, bam. Now, if this guy flipped, he would be dead, even though he has a diamond on him and an image on the back, but since they don't have veterans. But just to make it easy, these guys will die. And, uh, you know, I'll put this limit, Lemus up here, diagonal, to indicate, like, it died too. So, right now, we're looking at three points for the Romans, because the Romans get a point for each unit they kill. I'll have to double-check that, but I'm pretty sure it's true. And the Alemanni have won. So the Romans, um, you'll see why it doesn't really matter a whole lot. But uh, they take three losses. That's actually pretty hefty. One, two, three. Oof, that cavalry converted to uh, infantry. So now you can see that since there's a second round of melee available, both sides have, will have an option to retreat. But now the Roman advantage is largely gone. They still have two cavalry, but they no longer have heavy advantage, I don't think. I'll have to double check. Much, much fewer um, veterans. So now before we go into the second melee round, the defender and then the attacker may elect to retreat. And the Romans, I think they are going to decline to retreat. I think they, they predict the Alemanni will retreat. There's a good way to predict that because you actually recover units, usually, uh, at the end of a battle. So retreating will allow some recovery for the Alemanni. The Romans are counting on them doing that. So now the Alemanni, they're going to they're gonna retreat. They're going to go right back to where they came from. Okay, so now both sides can recover. So these losses in this game, the way I think of it, they're not just dead people, but they're people that ran away from the battle. You know, they were routed, got separated, and so on. So anyway, this is a large battle. It's a small battle if there's only like two or one unit on each side, but it's a large battle. So each side can recover two eliminated units of their choice. Well, the Alamani just flips two over. Um, so, you know, that's not too bad for the Alamani. They scoop up two guys that had died. Now, the Romans didn't lose anyone. Now they had a Lemus eliminated, but that's that's not a unit. You can't uh, rebuild walls magically. Now each civilized nation can restore one elite unit. So Romans are civilized. They can flip one of these units. I'm trying to decide if it's better to have extra cavalry or better um, legions for the heavy. You know, I think I, I think the cavalry is good. So we'll keep these legions damaged. Huh, that's a tough call, honestly. I think I think, I think uh, we'll actually flip one of the legions because we have two cavalry, and this gives us heavy advantage against someone like this. Yeah, okay. So that's that's the recovery there. Leaders can be eliminated in battle, but not if one side retreats between melee rounds for whatever reason. Let's go put these guys back on the map. Okay, here we are back on the map. Vedomaris and his Alamanni retreated. They had to retreat to there. The Romans remain there. 
So that ends their first unit stacks step. So since this is an invasion, they get a second unit stacks step where all their units now have four movement uh, points right now because they're, they're with the leader. That's why they, they're all infantry. They go three, but they get plus one for their moving with the leader. So I have to decide what this, this guy's going to do. Like, I don't want to just like go head on into the Romans, right? But I do want to get into Gallia Sept. Ideally take Lotharingia, right? Um, but I could go south now, just and hope the Romans can't intercept. But they have a high uh, combat value leader, which means they get at least plus three to their interceptions. I could try to put some rivers and ridges in between, try to reduce that. But if I could get down here and they fail to intercept, all of Italy's pretty ripe for the taking. There are some, uh, there is a legion down by Rome though. Um, I could just try to get around them, go through here, probably get intercepted. If I get intercepted at the city, a fortified city has that scallop border around it, gives a decent advantage to the defender. I guess I can go one, two, three, four, and try to bust in up there, and you know, the Romans would have to go three spaces to try to get around. You know, maybe, maybe. That might be worth doing, actually. Just try to reduce the invasion potential. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll go one. And I'm in barbarian territory now, so they cannot intercept. It's not friendly territory. Two. And uh, you probably want to see where these guys are going. Three. Oh, I didn't calculate that right. <laughs> one, two. Oh, yeah, three. Get around into Frisia. And then four into Flandria. Bam. Okay, now the Romans have to decide, are they going to try to intercept? Now, the reason I would want to as a Romans is because this guy's going to have a leader campaign right after this. And the entire stack gets to go on campaign twice and come down and burn down this city, things like that. So we have to intercept. Just got to do it. So the combat leader, the uh, bonus is plus three. It's minus... Uh, one for the distance of three provinces. Can he get there without crossing rivers? One, two, three. He can. Um, oh, rivers don't matter. It's it's just straits and ridges that matter. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's oh plus two for being an empire. So that's five minus one. So plus four. We need six or more, right? Six or more. So we're gonna have another battle. Okay, here we are. The lim Limus is destroyed. Let's see if it does any damage. Even number. It's called a D2 in the game. Ooh, man, they lucked out again. No damage for destroying the Limus. Here we have the forces arrayed. Now I'm going to try to speed things up a little. Um, I'm not going to go into that detail for every battle. Um, so let's figure out die roll modifiers. Archery round. There's one archer. No modifiers other than plus one for the archer itself. So we had a nine plus one is ten. That is one hit. So uh, the Alamani take a loss from the archer. Now for the melee round, let's calculate the die roll modifiers. Okay, the Alamani actually have a minus two, minus one for attacking in a marsh. Whoops. <laughs> and uh, minus one because the enemy has the heavy advantage. So they have no heavies here, so the other side has to have at least one heavy, and they do. If they had any heavies, it, the other side would have to have two more, uh, which they do because we have zero. <laughs> uh, and then the Romans have cavalry advantage, so that's plus one. Um, they just have to have one cavalry if the other side has none, or two more than the other side. They get plus one for just being an empire fighting barbarians. And they get a plus one for having two, at least two elite bonuses, the diamonds. If they don't have four elite bonuses, which would give one more as a, a special Roman bonus. Now, uh, this battle seems actually uh, closer than the last one. So um, the attacker has to decide, are they going to forfeit one of their rerolls to modify one of the dice by plus or minus one? I think they're going to do the Romans. Mm, or minus two, plus or minus two, I should say. Romans, minus two. Well, the Romans will use a die roll modifier as well to get that back. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure... Uh, Maybe it's just I'll always play that way, but I don't, I don't know what the good choice is here. Okay, so we're we're going to go ahead and roll for these guys. Attacker first, plus two. 
we get a nine against or with a, a nine with four units that is two losses for the Romans and then the Romans have five units and a plus three they got basically an 11 that would be three losses attackers have one reroll left they're gonna ask the Romans to reroll Romans rolled seven plus three is ten um, yeah no no difference now the Romans do they want to reroll I think so it's unlikely the Alemanni are gonna do better so they're gonna ask the Alemanni to reroll hopefully get something bad seven plus two is nine yeah still two okay and they still have one more reroll let's let's just waste it waste the reroll oh they got nine plus two is eleven. Oh, that backfired again my my gambling my gambling situation well no that's a that's two and a half we're in marsh which doesn't matter so it's still two okay so that was worth it like it, if you look at the crt it's tough tough um in the current situation for the alamani to get one more hit so we're looking at two and three so well yep yeah, here's losses bam bam and then oh they take three losses yeah wow then the romans are going to take two losses so they are their force is whittling away but i'm inclined to harm units that can recover first okay the defender may retreat <laughs> decline attacker hell yeah okay they recover this is a major battle so they recover two units the defender did not lose any units but they can recover because they're civilized two elite units. It's a little, I think it's a different term than recover, but same idea. Mm, no, we'll do this guy. All right, so they're back to where they started. Okay, um, so I need to remember um, Romans just the limitus or the limus. Limitus is plural, limus is singular. I keep mixing those up. The uh, Alemanni lost three units, even though they, no, they lost four units. Even though they recovered and there's only two permanent losses, they actually lost four units. So the Romans got four points, the Alemanni won. Okay, here we got the Alemanni. They retreated from battle, they're right there. That ends their unit stack step, um, which is the second step of the invasion. So now it's the leader campaign step, and as I mentioned before, Vito Maris has a two uh, campaign rating. He can go on two campaigns. That means his stack can move and combat just like it was a unit stack step, but only his step, or stack, I should say. Now, he, there is only one stack, so in this case it doesn't really matter, but like when you have lots and lots of units, like it's really just the leader stack for this point. I don't think he wants to attack Julianus. He only has three infantry units, and if they get reduced too far, he, re I mean, he's already pretty weak. He risks having his horde attacked and taking a hit. If a horde takes a hit, the tribe has to submit to whoever did that and become the, the vassal of whoever attacked them. So we don't want that. We want these green guys to survive, get into Northern Gaul eventually and get some points. So he could go on campaign go one, two, three, four, like down to here and try to get a point destroying a Lemus. But there's a 50% chance of the Lemus inflicting a hit. Um, and then, you know, then he can go on campaign back, back and protect his horde. Oh, I, I should mention the horde can't move with a leader on campaign. So that that's the, really the gist of it. So I think he's just going to forego his campaign, which is kind of lame, but I took too many losses trying to bust into Gaul. I didn't realize the strength of Julianus. I'm not sure what he should have done. Maybe just, I don't know. I mean, it's an invasion. I, mean, I feel like I have to take advantage of that. So um, this is, video is already really long. All I did was one nation, but it went into a lot of detail. In the following videos, I'm gonna to try to streamline that so we can get a lot of nations in. So uh, thanks for watching. Next episode will be the Franks.